Um, how did you first learn about animation? Like where, what sparked you to like decide, yeah, I'm going to, I want to do that. Um, Necessity. <laughs> I, um, you know, my, my training, you know, born and raised in Southern California, Monrovia, California. And, uh, earliest remembrance of, um, of drawing. People, and when you start drawing, and I was four years old. I remember because, you know, we moved a lot. And we lived in like 14 different houses in Monrovia. You know, we, we, you know mom and, and I, we, you know, we moved all over the place. And uh, I, re I remember where we were living at the time. Uh, and I would take... Um, uh, comic book covers and put a piece of wax paper. And I mean, talking about, you know, we're going back to the early 50s, you know, like, like 1954, where you could take wax paper and just get, you could scratch it and get wax on your ear. I mean, that was kind of, and so I would uh, put wax paper over a comic book cover and take a pencil and copy the comic book cover. And, you know, it come off like a, like a gray, you know, from the, from the paper itself. But, but that's my early re earliest remembrance of, uh, of drawing. Sitting on my, you know, sitting like Reese would be sitting, just on, you know, just laying on my belly, just you know, drawing that. And that was my earliest remembrance of uh, of drawing. And uh, junior college, uh, Citrus Junior College in Sousa, and um, I, I was a, a jock. You know, played football, and I got a football scholarship to the University of Las Vegas. Uh, where I, I finished up with my uh, AA at Citrus and then uh, BA at uh, University of Las Vegas. And my plans were to be a, I wanted to be a commercial artist and uh, do books and magazines, uh, illustration, you know, like Bob Peake and Robert Reacher and, uh, you know, uh, Leroy Neiman, you know, all those guys that were, you know, commercial artists, uh, you know, making a living uh, doing uh, illustration. So that's what I wanted to do. So my portfolio was sort of geared toward that. And uh, coming back to Southern California, there are no uh, commercial art jobs in Southern California. Chicago and New York, where they're doing all the publishing and all that kind of stuff, is, is where uh, a young person that should have been, you know, to be able to try to get some experience that way. Uh, but, you know, I had a wife, two kids, and, um, you know, had have that food on the table, you know, you have to, I had to have a job, you know, I'm, I'm graduating from college, you know, and I got a wife and two kids. So it's not like I'm coming off, you know, and sort of looking around on my own. And um, so I took a job uh, doing drafting. Uh, I had multiple um, resumes out, you know, I, I didn't even walk to get my degree, you know, I, after, after I took my first final, my last final, <laughs> you know, I, I hot put it back to uh, Southern California. And, you know, that was like on uh, Friday, that weekend, that Monday, I was either going off on job interviews or I was uh, filling out resumes uh, and, uh, and job applications. You know? and, uh, and I got a call from a person, uh, a drafting company, it's right around the corner from where I was living. And uh, Eubanks um, drafting, I, I worked there one, exactly one week. <laughs> You know, because it was a drafting, it's something, you know, that's more creative. And then I got a, a call from uh, Honeywell in West Covina. Um, and they had a job for a technical illustrator. And so, gee whiz, I, um, I jumped on that because technical illustrator is close to illustrator. <laughs> you know, which is closer to, you know, draftsman, technical illustrator. illustrator. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm making some progress, you know, because it's closer to where I wanted to be. And so a technical illustrator. And uh, went down there, and, and we uh, actually, you know, there was a small department, about five, six guys. And uh, there was one guy who did um, all the, you know, the exploded views, all that really, really, really creative good stuff, you know. And the uh, rest of us were doing uh, block diagrams and flowcharts. <laughs> uh, but the paid bills, and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know it, it was okay, you know, for, you know, just starting out and trying, trying to get, uh, you know, make ends meet and uh, bringing in some income. Uh, but after about a year and a half of that, I said, you was, I want to do something more creative. I have to be around creative people. And so I said, what, 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 what should I do? Well, I'll say, okay, I'll, I'll take a job. I'm not the job, but I'll, I'll go to school. And, and hopefully uh, I'll meet somebody at art school or I'll see something in the bulletin board, artist one, you know, something that would give me a, a, an opportunity to be a little bit more creative. And so I took a class at Art Center 
uh, which was located in, in uh, downtown uh, Los Angeles at the time, back in the 70s, this is uh, this like 74. Uh, you know, working during the day and then taking the, uh, going to class, I think one night a week. And my instructor was a, a gentleman by the name of Sam McKim. And uh, Sam McKim worked at, at Imagineering, uh, doing, you know, designing and building all the rides for the theme parks. And I used to teach a class called Sketching for Illustration. And uh, one night uh, class, he told the class about uh, a trainee program that was starting at Disney to train uh, artists to be animators. Um, and, the, you know, the history of Disney animation, you know, you had uh, 1937 release of Snow White, you know, Frank Thomas, Ali Johnson, you know, Carl, you know, all these great young men who worked on uh, Snow White in 1937. Well, here's 1974, they're still at the board uh, animating. Uh, and they didn't um, you know, nobody would like train to sort of take their places when they left. So these are older gentlemen. Management uh, got the idea of, you know, bringing in young guys, uh, young animators, or not animators, but young artists to be trained to possibly work into animation. And so they, they uh, started a training program probably about 1971, uh, 72, somewhere in there. And they brought in a wave because you know word went out. Uh, Eric Larson was head of the uh, training department, and he you know he went out and spread word. They had brochures printed up to where they would um, uh, advertise that you know come to Disney and be trained to be an animator. And they explained the animation process, etc. One big way uh, of artists who had been in there been into the program and initially uh, uh, Don Bluth and John Pomeroy, um, Gary Goldman. Uh, were some of the first, uh, you know, that first wave of, uh, of young artists being trained to be animators. Mr. McKim, and he set me up with a, um, a um, an interview with, uh, with, with Disney. <laughs> I, rem I remember the conversation after, uh, after class, you know, and uh, going through the parking lot and, and the people were saying, I'm not going to Disney, they don't pay anything. <laughs> so, so, but for me, you know, it was, it was an opportunity to, uh, to seek something more creative and uh, do something more creative than you know block diagrams and flow charts. So I followed up on the uh, uh, the information and uh, got in touch with with Eric Larson, uh, who scheduled an interview. I went out on lunch break from uh, West Covina, drove to um, Burbank, you know, uh, on my lunch hour. <laughs> anyway, I, I got there and uh, Eric looked at my port my uh, portfolio. I said, yeah, that's, that's nice, Ron, but you know, what we want to see is quick sketches, you know, from uh, life and from animal. I didn't include any quick sketches in my portfolio, not thinking, uh, you know, that that was a, important. I mean, you didn't put those graphs and all those charts that you've been doing? <laughs> no, no, no. But I did include um, uh, a very detailed drawing of Pinocchio. <laughs> Thinking, you know, that would that would you know that would sell me sell them on uh, you know me being able to draw Pinocchio, you know. Uh, but you know, they said, nah, we want to see quick sketches. And uh, like I said, I had been doing quick sketches since high school. A junior year in high school, my high school art teacher, uh, Mrs. Dorothy Clemens, kicked me out of class. <laughs> you know, for be, I, you know, I deserved I would be a jerk, but she encouraged the class to carry a sketchbook and do quick sketches. You know, I took her advice to carry a sketchbook, and I carry a sketchbook to this day. Um, and I went home, went home, got three sketchbooks, and dropped them off at the garden gate at Disney uh, Studios. And about a week or so later, I got a call, uh, and Eric said I could start a training program anytime I wanted. And uh, so uh, I remember I, I, uh, I worked at Honeywell on a Friday. Uh, the very next day was my birthday. And that Monday, I started at Disney, uh, February 10th, uh, 1975, was my start date. And everything I knew about animation, I learned my first day there. Didn't know anything about animation. I had probably, at that particular point in time, uh, I hadn't seen a, a Disney animated film probably in 10 years or so. I could just draw. Uh, and they were able to see in my quick sketches that I had somewhat of a, um, an idea of movement and, and being able to express a movement in my drawings. And so I was hired on potential. Not because I, you know, I 
always, you know, from a child, I saw Fantasia and I wanted to be an animator. I had no idea what an animator was, what an animator did. You know, I, I, I just draw. And so they hired me again on potential and uh, the training program uh, was, uh, they would introduce you to a number of different disciplines based on storytelling. And it wasn't about drawing pictures, it was about storytelling, body language, um, you know, and, and uh, all the, again, the, uh, the input from Eric uh, Larson and from uh, other uh, animators who would come in and give us uh, uh, talks and lectures. Um, Ward Kimball uh, would come in and give us lectures. Uh, Blaine Gibson, who worked uh, in, in feature animation for a while, so I saw his abilities in you know in sculpting and so. But uh, he came in and gave us and gave us class on sculpting. And Mark Davis came in and talked about drawing. We saw a number of or a great number of uh, silent films. Uh, Charlie Chaplin. Um, Lauren Hardy, those silent films where it's, just, it's what it was, it wasn't dialogue and bombs and explosion, it was body language, you know, and, and how to, how to get over, I guess, to get over, but uh, how to draw a character uh, in pantomime, you know, and, and so, uh, but it was all uh, around storytelling. And so, um, but that was a training program and you were at, uh, within four weeks, you were to do a, uh, a short little, rough animation piece. At the end of the four weeks, they would uh, evaluate the test, um, the seasoned animators, uh, some um, production people, as well as um, uh, Eric. And they say, well, this person has potential, uh, you know, this person doesn't. And at that time, they would bring in, um, you know, people all over. You know, I, I came in, I had no animation experience. I knew nothing about animation. And they would bring, and other people would come in from, say, like CalArts, who had a, you know, more of a well-rounded um, feel for animation, you know, wanted to be an animator since they were two years old, you know, and that type of thing. And that was burning fire for, you know, animation. Uh, you know, I, I had no idea, you know, Frank Thomas, Ali Johnson, all these greats, you know, I'm passing people in the hall, you know, and say, hi, hi Frank, I, I had no idea who they were, you know. I mean, I mean, their body of work, you know. I'm, I mean, I'm just new on the block, you know. Um, but I, you know, I, I, uh, they took that in consideration, you know, that even though my 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 rough test was really rough and and not really finessed, but they saw the potential, and so they kept. So if you pass the first test, four week test, you're you're given another four weeks to come up with uh, another test. Um, based on what you had, what you've learned in that first four weeks, and um, and how fast you were catching on to you know just the concept of animation, and uh, so I you know finished up my second uh, test test on Goofy, um, and I think he was you know, when you uh, when you're drawing and you're 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 painting, if you do something that you know something about, you know it has more of a believability, uh, and uh, so I did Goofy playing football. You know, and been you know playing football and all kind. Of, so I knew something about the game, and I knew, you know, and and, and taking Goofy and and putting him in a, in a football situation. Again, it wasn't a very long test. I mean, it's just, we're, we're talking about a really, you know, two three second uh, piece of animation. You know, nothing really really uh, over the top. It's just um, a little bit of seeing. You know, is this guy picking up the concept of animation? Squash, stretch, timing. Uh, drawing on model, you know, so those those type of things they were looking at uh, in this this first test, and the second test had to do with uh, I did um, Mr. Toad. He, he's sitting on a, on a sitting up on a brick wall like Humpty Dumpty, right? And he, he and this and it, something catches his eye. He looks forward. He pulls out a, a eyeglass. He's looking from screen right, screen left, like so. And um, it, and you cut to this um, Tinkerbell type of um, girl that's walking and she's got this uh, big umbrella uh, sort of uh, in the back. So you get, you get in the back view of her and she's sort of you know, w walking um, away from the camera. And then she stops and turns around. And so this Tinkerbell had, Tinkerbell body has a frog's face on it, right? So that was like the payoff. You know, you know kind of hokey, kind of, but you know, as, as far as trying to show some timing and, um, and drawing on model and, 
you know, all the stuff that they were looking for. And, you know, it, it worked. So I came in with, with that group. Uh, we were on the second floor of the, of the uh, animation building and the production was being done on the first floor. Uh, they were doing, working on restaurants at the time. And so, you know, so now all the knowledge that's sort of uh, obtained in those first eight weeks, now you got to put it into practice of actually doing someone's in-betweens. And that, you know, that was basically how I learned animation was doing in-betweens. And uh, so I was sent down to do in-betweens for uh, Frank Thomas. And Glenn King was sent down to do in-betweens for Ollie Johnson. And we were roomed together. And uh, so we were, um, you know, doing in-betweens for some of the greatest animators in the world. <laughs> so little did I know that that was what I was doing, you know, doing in between for the great Frank Thomas. Great learning environment. I mean, it was so rich as far as you know, learning and, and being able to be exposed to all this uh, history and, and, and the, uh, the culture of um, animation and being exposed to literally the greatest animators in the world. Uh, and you know, just and having access to all the animated features that had ever been done. You know, they they kept you know all the drawings, uh, all the, the the rough drawings, cleanup drawings, and you know even I mean everything. You know, uh, to study. You know, it was there to to study and to see how the uh, those guys handle a particular scene that you. Oh, I saw that scene. Uh, let me look it up and, and and flip through the drawings and see how you know how, how they handle this. Uh, so it, it was a great learning environment. Plus, again, all the the classes that were conducted and and one on one with Eric Larson. I mean, you know, just sign up and they give you an hour. However, it was going over your drawings and showing you uh, we could do this. We can make this better. You know, this is not quite working. And you know, and and it, it was a great learning environment. Uh, and I was soaking it up you know, like a sponge. You know, part of the process uh, that they would um, give you uh, little scenes to do. Uh, you know, they weren't uh, acting in really heavy scenes, but geared towards uh, where I was. You know, as far as uh, you know, I, I couldn't handle you know real fine acting, close up, you know, a subtle scene. But you know, something that had some action in it. So, uh, so Frank would give me these little scenes to do, uh, which freed him up to do, you know, more, um, uh, you know, more challenging scenes. Uh, so, doing Frank's in betweens, uh, my eight-hour day, and then you know, weekends and at night and on lunch hours, uh, you know, I'd be doing some animation uh, under his supervi supervision uh, and doing a, a scene. And in those days, you had to do a hundred feet of animation to get a screen credit. And be promoted to an animator. And uh, on Rescuers, uh, I did uh, 51 feet uh, before uh, the animation came to a conclusion. So I didn't hit the, the mark uh, to be uh, promoted. I remember, I remember Glenn, Glenn, Glenn hit it. Uh, he had over 100 feet uh, working with Ollie, so he was promoted to an animator. Um, and, you know, several other people also who had been there a little longer, had a little bit longer time to work on um, on the feature. And then um, the next production was um, Peach Dragon. And I was doing in-betweens for uh, Gary Goldman and doing uh, um, some animation uh, on the side. They got up to another 50 some odd feet before animation came to a conclusion. And uh, then we started off on uh, the small one. And then uh, I was able to hit 100 feet of animation uh, on the small one. And, um, you know, promote to an animator, get off the clock and, you know, get screen credit and all nine yards, get paid like an animator should be, you know, gets paid. Uh, so that was, um, you know, sort of my uh, way into animation. So, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, you know, open the door and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm there already. You know, it took it took a while. And like I said, if I had not followed up on uh, my original portfolio, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. You know, if I got discouraged and say, well, you know, they were looking for something that I didn't have, so you know, back to log diagram and flowcharts. Yeah, and you you got to thank your your teacher who you know made you keep a sketch. Yeah, yeah her advice was um, you know is literally uh, the foundation of. Of my artistic career, because uh, yeah, I wrote, ended up writing a book about Quixote, 
you know, and, and the quick sketching technique, all the, you know, the basics of what I utilize in my illustration work, as well as, uh, you know, the thumbnails in, in my, that are utilized in, uh, in animation and planning out a scene. So, uh, so yeah, that, that foundational um, work on and quick sketching has literally been, like I said, my foundation in our carrying a sketchbook and yeah. doing some sketches uh, on a daily basis and you know, always uh, trying to get in, you know, a little, a little pencil mileage. Um, yeah. So are you, when you go out and sketch, do you go out and sketch or do you just sit down in your living room there and just start sketching something or? No, everything I do is uh, live, you know, mm -hmm. live action. So uh, when I was able to get out more, you know, you know, you go to the park or, you know, wherever I am, you know, I got my sketchbook, I'm sketching from life. You know, right. Nothing off the top of my head. I don't know, put this down. Right. No, you know, it's got to be live. You know, football game, basketball game, uh, some sports, uh, just you know, there's people walking in the mall. Uh, you know, that that that's that's what that's what uh, motivates me is to to draw from life. You you um, wouldn't I, you wouldn't sit and watch TV and do that. Oh yeah, do uh, TV. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, lots of because uh, you know most sports are on TV. Uh, oftentimes, you have the opportunity to indulge and go to see a live uh, some live sports, but you know, a lot of uh, sports action is just on TV, so you get a chance to. Because you know they're doing the action, and uh, you know you try to catch, capture that action. Okay. Do you do anything where you freeze frame it and then sit there and? No, I, I, I have my kids. I say you, know, you carry a sketchbook with you. Uh, if you draw from TV, you watch a tennis match or whatever you're watching TV. You know, no freeze frames. Mm. Uh, that, that's out. You know, that, that's out. Uh, no freeze frame anything. Okay, so either live or you watch it on TV, but no freeze frame, no slow mo, no, no none of that slow -mo. stuff. No, none of that stuff. Uh, and uh, I, I showed you, you know, Jolly, right? And, uh, that was my uh, first um, supervising animator uh, job on Jolly uh, from Hunchback. And, uh, the name's Sweet, Joshua Sweet, medical officer. Yeah, Milo Thatch. Milo Thatch. You yeah, at three o'clock. Well, no time like the present. Oh boy. Nice, isn't it? The catalog says that this little beauty can saw through a femur in 28 seconds. I'm betting I can cut that time in half. Now, stick out your tongue and say ah. Oh no, really, I have ah. So, where you from? Ah, really? I have family up that way. Beautiful country up there. You do any fishing? Oh, oh, oh. Me? I hate fishing. I hate fish. Hate the taste, hate the smell, and hate all them little bones. Here, I'm gonna need you to fill these up. Here's uh, the good doctor. Oh, wow. And a good Dr. Sweet here. It's a big from, uh, pull back from wow, that's huge. Yeah, uh, he's a good doctor. So that's something that, that you would use to as a reference? Oh, yeah, yeah. For every uh, major character, there would be a maquette a sculpt so we could see what uh, the character looked like in um, you know, different um, camera angles. This is... Uh, the elk from Firebird, right? Oh, okay. So these are my three leads, uh, opportunity <laughs> lead animators for uh, these characters. So do they give you that, or is that a copy, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah they give, you know, if you're a lead, you know, you get certain oh, yeah. uh, perks of the, uh, of the position, I guess. <laughs> That's a nice perk, you, some nice perks you got there, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, while at Disney, you got to meet uh, Jonathan Winters. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Jonathan was, uh, he, uh, we, we were doing Black Cauldron, and uh, he was uh, in line to do a voice of uh, King Idley. And uh, he, he ended up not doing the voice uh, of King Idley, but, you know, he came in and uh, Arch Stevens, uh, who was uh, one of the, the directors at the time, and myself and uh, Jonathan Winter, we went, we went to lunch at the, on the, at the commissary at the studio, and <laughs> he was just so funny, uh, you know, just sitting there at the table telling these jokes, and, uh, you know, I, I could barely eat, you know, I could barely get down by the food, you know, with, uh, you know, laughing so hard at some of the things he, uh, he, he had to say. I, I carried my sketch pad with me everywhere, and, uh, and Jonathan, uh, 
you know, he just reached over, grabbed my sketchbook, and he drew this uh, sketch in my book, you know, and signed it. Uh, also, you, you, in your book, you, you mentioned that you met uh, Al Hirschfeld, and you got yeah. to talk to him. Uh, what did you guys talk about? Or <laughs> I, um, actually, yeah, I did. I met him in the, in the sense that uh, we were working on um, Aladdin, and uh, uh, Eric Goldberg's uh, genie is patterned pretty much after uh, Al Hirschfeld's style, you know, the the lines and all the you know the, the stuff that he uses, uh, that fluidity, uh, and um, and he, and so he came out to to the studio and conducted a, um, a caricature uh, workshop. Right. And so uh, myself and uh, several other artists uh, took advantage of, uh, of him being there. And uh, one of the assignments that he was showing us how to do it and all this was to um, um, do a caricature. And I, I did a caricature of him. And uh, so at the end of the, uh, the session, um, everybody was showing him the work, and I showed him my uh, caricature of him. And uh, so that was basically how I, I met uh, Mr. Hirschfeld. I think he said something, oh, that's me, or something like that. If anybody wants to check out The Lion King, that's yeah. really a great documentary to take a look at. Yeah, yeah. It really goes over all his work and what he's done. So. Yeah, yeah, he's been around for a long I think he was like in his 90s when he came out. It was, that was in 92. Uh, he was, uh, I think he was in his 90s at the time when he came out. Still just a spry and, you know, just a lot of energy, a lot of energy. Yeah, I, I, liked, I liked looking at your, the, the book. Uh, uh, there was a nice shot of you working on a scene and your daughter is like sitting on the ground, you know, drawn. To my that's my granddaughter Reese, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. granddaughter Reese, yeah. oh, that's cute. Yeah. yeah, have you ever done any with computers? Did you... I've trained uh, on Dinosaur, uh, when Disney did Dinosaur, and uh, I forget what production I had come off of, um, and they were trying to, or they were recruiting uh, animators to come over and learn the process and, uh, you know, to be able to ramp up for, for Dinosaur. And I went over and um, trained for about, I don't know, maybe six months or so. And uh, you know, just constantly, you know, it, you know, it was it was working, you know, really well you know, for me. I, you know, I thought it was you know coming, making progress. Um, but for some reason, you know, I was going to work somewhat semi-depressed. <laughs> and and you know, when I really thought about it, it was because I wasn't drawing on a daily basis. And uh, so I uh, bailed out of that project, and they, you know they. During the time, they were had several other uh, traditional projects going on, so I latched on to a, to another project uh, that, that they were doing, um, but it just you know it just didn't click with me. You know, a lot of you know a lot of guys you know these you know they were able to make that adjustment, and it wasn't like I wasn't I wasn't I, I couldn't make the adjustment. It's just that you know I just didn't feel being able to, to draw, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm a pencil pusher at heart, you know, right. so, uh, when that was uh, taken away from me, uh, I think taken away from me, you know, but I just wasn't able to do it on a daily basis and to really uh, have the joy of just drawing, you know, and like I said, I just wasn't feeling it, you know, and uh, so like I said, I, I bailed out of that project, uh, but you know, I, just, I hadn't been there, and sort of got the basics down, you know, of, of being able to, to mouse and keyboard and, you know, do all the stuff that you were talking about. Um, but yeah, I, I just miss drawing so much. I had to go back. <laughs> you know, you got out of Dinosaur, I guess, and you went on to, to some other films after that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, like, I'm trying to think, maybe it was um, Fantasia in 2000. Some, some, uh, where it, I can't remember exactly uh, what it, the order of. Uh, of what was what was up next, but uh, but I did you know go back and latch on to a, to a feature. Well, C you know CGI was you know coming in. Um, I said I've been I've been in Disney for about, about thirty years, uh, feature animation for thirty years, and um, so they were doing because of um, Chicken Little, I think Chicken Little, uh, Meet the Robinsons. You know they 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 really scaled back on. Um, 
traditional animation. You know, it, it was really uh, sort of moving out, of, moving out of the movies, move traditional out of the way, get ready for the new wave of uh, of, uh, of CGI. Because uh, you know, we it got to where you know the paper was uh, very scared. Join, you know, join paper. Uh, you know, you had to make a appointment to go down to uh, the supply room and you know to get supplies it was just sort of um it's a slowly moving traditional uh and um anyway they were you know they were gearing up and and, and some of the guys you know they made a, you know, a good transition into uh, so, you know so traditional animation animators made it you know made the transition into uh doing um uh, chicken little and you know where they were going and uh so i uh, ended up um, going to um, um, publications, Disney publications, hmm. uh, and I worked there for eight years uh, before I, I retired. Uh, and um, yeah, so that was that was sort of my Disney arc, uh, which lasted thirty eight years, uh, all, to, all told, a thirty in feature, and uh, it lasted in um, in the um, publication department. Uh, you know, doing the, the characters and basically my last project was uh, Steamboat School. So I had an opportunity to uh, to do uh, my pen and ink work in the, in, a, in the book form. It was very, very successful. And it, it, it took probably 10 years from the time it was um, um, first pitched to the time it got published. Uh, it, 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 it went through a long series of, of drama, you know, let's, let's do it, let's not do it, hold off, you know, how are we gonna handle this? Um, but, you know, once it did, um, um, was published, I think in, that, in 2016, uh, it's got a, a whole list of, uh, of uh, awards and whatnot that it, uh, that it garnered and sort of uh, complete the arc of what I wanted to do in, in the, the very beginning is to do uh, book and magazine illustration, but I had been doing book and magazine illustration on a freelance basis, you know, uh, for a long time, even going back to uh, feature animation days. Uh, so yeah, doing that, and you just did you keep doing like these little freelance jobs in between when you were working oh, yeah. feature? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, we did freelance jobs. Um, you know, doing. Uh, um, Book and magazine illustration, and probably in my blog, I've got some of the, some of those things in in there. Uh, what I did, uh, uh, and um, even worked on uh, you know the Paul Abdul video, opposite of the tracks. Uh, there yeah, was a lot of Disney folks um, yeah, no, doing that. that. So you know we do do a, 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 just a lot of uh, fun stuff. Do you have any uh, uh, story ideas for uh, children's books now? Are you working on anything like that, or? Yeah, I've, I've not. Um, mostly in the, in the in the thinking stage of uh, of doing um, some some more uh, I'd say humorous illustration because you know uh, in uh, illustration form because right now I'm, I'm probably uh, actually that's probably but I'm doing uh, my pen and ink work um, it takes about a year uh, to do a piece uh, and then work you know figure out another one and, and trying to um, um, figure out what I'm going to do next. So I've got you know some ideas of what my next big penny piece is going to be. Uh, and actually today I just um, um, posted on my um, on my blog the um, the end of a three part series on uh, uh, and the anatomy of a circus. I did you know a circus um, piece of illustration and. Uh, and so to sort of go in and dissect that and give some information as to how it started and, you know, and here's the end product of it. Um, but again, you know, I, I've got some ideas of, uh, of, of a really a children's book uh, thing that, you know, just jotting down uh, little thumbnails and, and hopefully, hopefully sometime I'll discipline myself to sit down and actually uh, bring it to fruition. Yeah. Uh, if anybody wants to take a look at your blogs, I mean, is it just a blog or do you have a website? Just, yeah, just a blog. Um, Ronhusband.blogspot, B L O G S P O T dot com. I did it probably uh, as sort of like a, 
uh, memoirs from my from my grandkids. You know, who's 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 you know who's Grampy's like you know and, uh, and their kids. You know, that, that right. grandpa, grandpa. You know, uh, you know, this is Ron's husband. You know, grandpa. Okay, so any advice you want to give to anybody that's like starting out in doing art or animation or? Yeah, yeah. The advice I would give is draw, 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 and draw some more. Eric, Eric Larson uh, said uh, the only limitation that an animator has is his imagination and his ability to draw what he imagines. And that was that was uh, I remember uh, early on in the in the trainee program that uh, Eric said that and that really stuck with me the resident and, and it makes a whole lot of sense. So you can have a an idea of what you want to do, but does that idea communicate when you put it on paper? Mm -hmm. What's the best way to communicate that idea or that idea is literally a storyline. That's the way that's where you tell your story. Yeah. Well, I want to thank Ron uh, Hudson for coming on Anime Educated and letting us know what he's what he has done and what he's still doing. And uh, you know, good luck out there, and and you know, keep safe and and uh, healthy. Well, I appreciate uh, the invite, you know, and the opportunity to come on and share, you know, a little bit of uh, who I am. Uh, this is we'll have more out there, but uh, okay. all right, Jim, I appreciate it. Thank you. And, all right, uh, thanks again. Okay. Right. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Ron Husband here on Anime Educated. Uh, I want to thank him again for coming on and talking about, you know, his involvement with Disney and what he's been working on and what he's working on now. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please leave a comment below and you can either watch this one or you can watch this one or you can subscribe by pushing that button right over there. Go ahead, push it. Yeah, all right, now you're a subscriber. So we'll see you next time on Animated Educated.